So in the previous lecture, you have learned two sample tests, but for independent sample. So one of the assumptions is these two sample are from two population, which the two population has nothing to do with each other. They are independent. So the measurement that you measure from one observation in population A will not have any implication or influence the another measurement that you took from the population B, okay, from a observation. And then this observation unit or experiment unit is different. It's not the same unit, so it's different student. However, in some cases, we will have the pay sample. So for example, we want to compare the left and the right arm length of the student. So we can imagine that if you have 100 students, have the population of the left arm measurement, so whether left and right are different, so it's a left arm measurement and also the right arm measurement. And each of these measurements actually we took from the same student. It's the same student. Of course, you can imagine that for the taller student, you will get the longer left arm and also the longer right arm compare the measurement that we took from the shorter student. But these are the same student. For this kind of the questions, and the explanation unit is not independent from each other between the group or population, we need to use the pair sample t-test. So the most important of this lecture is you know to how to differentiate between two sample t-test, okay? Two type of two sample t-test. One is an independent sample t-test, another one is a pair sample t-test. So because they are different, so the hypothesis is also formulated differently. So what you see here is the mean of the difference, okay? It's equal to zero. So that means that the difference between the two population is zero. Another one, the, the difference between two population is not zero. And this is the formula. You have not learned how to calculate this. We're going to discuss this in the next few slides. So regardless what kind of the analysis you're going to use, it depends on your research questions. And for each research question, when you design your experiment or sampling, you will have all these elements. So in this case, you still have your population. So in this case, the two sample tests, you have two population. Although it's, it's not this population anymore, but you still have two population. You still obtain the sample from each of this population. And for each sample, each of this sample consists of number of observation unit. And then for each of these observation unit, you took a measurement. So after you took a measurement, this is how you arrange your data in a pair sample test. Okay. So it's different from the way how you organize your data in a independent sample. Can you notice any difference? Just pause the slide for a few seconds. Can you notice any difference how the data is organized compared to the independent sample? So first thing you notice that is still you have a number of students. So in this case, you have the both two population, okay, two sample. One is the length of the right arm, and another one is the length for the left arm. And for each of these measurement, you took from a student, correct? But for the left and right arm measurement, you took it from a same student not different student. So it's very different from the body height example that we discussed in the two independent sample t-test. So both of the measurement is measured from the same experiment unit. Okay. So each of this is not independent. So this is somehow dependent on this value as well. Of course, depend on the attribute of the student. And compared to the previous example, this is how you organize your data. So you have two group, okay, still two group as this one. Okay. But the measurement that you took for each of these observation is different. Okay. From each of these, the measurement that you took is from different observation unit. It's different. So the first one in the group one. Is different from the first one in the group two, okay, and so on and so forth.
So this is how you're going to organize your data for the pair sample t-test. So this is a hypothesis. Then we need to find the critical value. We still need to look for the alpha, one tail or two tail test, depend on the hypothesis. Degree of freedom. So in this case, you only have eight students in total. So the degree of freedom is eight minus one, you get seven. And then refer to the table based on the alpha, tail, and also degree of freedom to obtain the critical T. Then the next thing is you need to calculate the mean of the difference between these two sample. So rather than calculate the mean of each of the sample, we will first calculate the difference. So what you're going to do is to minus each of these, okay, with their pair sample. So in this case, it's 74 minus 72 is equal to 1. 67 minus 64 is equal to 3. After you get the, all the difference, you need to calculate the mean of the difference. So the total of the difference is 14. So we need to divide the 14 by 8 because you have the 8 observation. Then we get the mean difference. For standard deviation, still the same thing. So we need to calculate the standard deviation for this difference and then divide by the square root of n to get the standard error. So to calculate the standard deviation, we need to find the difference. Okay, so it's 2, two minus 1.750 and then square the value, you will get this, okay? Calculate the sum of square of the difference. Okay. After you have this, then you can calculate the same division by divide the sum of square with the degree of freedom, because this is a sample. You, then you will get the standard deviation. After that, put the same division in the formula of standard error, divide by the square root of n. You will get the standard error. So there are only two values you need to calculate, okay? That is important when you want to calculate the t-score. Just put the value in and then solve the formula. Then you get the calculated t. So first we formulate our statistical hypothesis, get the critical value, perform the calculation to obtain the test score, the next is to compare our test score with our critical value. So in this case, so you can imagine if you make a curve, our critical value is here. So this is a critical value, 2.365, okay, negative 2.365. So this is our critical region. And for the calculator T is 4 in the critical region. So that means that we will reject the no hypothesis. Then the next step is to make a conclusion. So there is a significant difference. So we really reject this one. So we're going to go for the alternative hypothesis. So there is a significant difference between the length of the right and the left arm of the student. So there are a few assumptions for pair t-test. So the bivariate is not independent variable. Okay, so a pair of the SY variable of the same measurement unit obtained from each of the SY unit. So both variable is obtained from the same SY unit. So the variable need to be continuous dependent variable and the response variable has a normal distribution and a homogeneity of variance. So this is same as a independent t-test. So the only difference is the this part. So for the next tutorial, you're going to formulate a research question. So this is a new question that you're going to formulate, which you want to compare a pair sample. So similar to the tutorial five, you have to collect the data, organize the data, and then summarize the data in a chart. So it's a box plot. After that, perform the proper statistical test. So you need to have a statistical hypothesis. 
critical value calculation you compare the t value with your critical value and also make a conclusion so you have to show each of these element clearly in your tutorial and then submit your tutorial to the smart ums and also submit your data by using this google form